All right, so we're going to watch How to Simplify Your Life, Minimalist Philosophy. By, I forgot, what's what's the in Inzil, Inzil Ganger. Inzil Ganger. Dude, I need to get a new fucking... Transcendentalist philosopher. A new fucking ad blocker. Henry David Thoreau argued that for humans, simplicity is the law of nature. We thrive in simplicity. It's an optimal state, free of clutter and without unnecessary weight. Yeah. When our lives are simple, it's easier to see where we stand. I, I'm still trying to learn minimalism. Uh, I recently sold my TV. I'm trying to sell my loft bed as well as these, these Hot Wheels. But I don't know. And come from and move towards as the minimal amount of chaos troubles our vision. Thoreau compared the value of simplicity to a mathematician solving an equation. He reduces it to its simplest terms. Because of today's many possibilities, people tend to overcomplicate life. Our consumerist culture encourages us to buy unnecessary stuff, instilling it. Yes, unnecessary shit like Supreme, fucking Louis Vuitton, or whatever the fuck. In us, that our lives are incomplete or inconvenient without them. Also, being part of a performance-driven and highly competitive society, our lives tend to be busy and our goals are many. Modern yes. life is cluttered with stuff, social connections, ideas, and stimuli. Yep. Worries and wishes fill our minds as we're always restless because we fail to distinguish the forest from the trees. When immersed in complexity, it's difficult to see the essential. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak, stated painter Hans Hofmann. Studies suggest that there's a link between simplicity and well-being. For example, a paper published by the Center of Development Studies from the University of Bath suggests that voluntary simplicity contributes to subjective well-being in several ways. Voluntary simplifiers report the experience of greater security, autonomy, competence, and the feeling of doing the right thing. The latter relates to ecological and societal concerns. Aside from such experiential... Yeah, so basically, like, just get the things that you need. ...benefits, a minimalist approach oh, to life could lead to us creating more overview and living more cheaply. This video explores ways to simplify life to boost overall well-being. How to simplify life. Damn, that was the intro. The ancient Greek philosopher Diogenes lived with minimal possessions, living in a barrel on the street. Bro, shout out to my man Diogenes. Uh, yeah, he's basically one of my favorite philosophers because like, he would just take a shit on people's uh, clothes and shit. It's cool only having some rags and a drinking cup but when he saw a child drinking water using his hands he threw away his drinking cup saying a child has beaten me in plainness of living diogenes wasn't the only one who lived with almost no possessions certain hermits and various monastic orders renounce worldly possessions partly to free themselves of the burdens that come with them the dalai lama stated in an interview and i quote if one's life is simple, contentment has to come. Simplicity is extremely important for happiness. Having few desires, feeling satisfied with what you have is very vital. Satisfaction with just enough food, clothing and shelter to protect yourself from the elements. No cap, bro. These are just all facts. Like, we gotta stop buying useless shit. Just stop buying it. Just stop buying useless stuff. It's like, it's bad for you. It's just bad for you. End quote. Of course, one doesn't have to be a cynic, Buddhist monk, or hermit to experience the joys of owning less. A minimalist approach to one's possessions can make a significant difference in one's life, as it removes the unnecessary clutter our senses can perceive in our immediate environment. According to Carl Jung, our living spaces are extensions of ourselves. Thus, keeping those spaces clean has a direct impact on the psyche. Also, the more stuff you own, the more you need to worry about, take care of, and protect. The f exactly, like, God forbid your house burns down. What, what are you going to get, really? Like, I'll see getting your cats, your family, but stuff? Can't replace that, man. Fewer worries, the better one feels. 
the fewer things to protect, the more time and energy one saves. Yep. Also, owning less makes us more agile. We could ask ourselves what we truly need. Do we need large houses with six bedrooms and two bathrooms? Or would a smaller place suffice? You know, once I get the money, bro, I'm going to save up for like a, a tiny house. I just love tiny houses. They look very comfy. Do we need an expensive car? How many of the clothes we own do we actually wear? And how many movies and television series do we watch? But pursuing stuff is tempting, as our consumerist culture promises happiness due to purchase and ownership. The previous video, Can Money Buy Happiness, explained that material possessions aren't great investments in contentment. Exactly, like instead of like spending on like your a Bugatti or fucking whatever the fuck, just invest it, dude. Invest your money. Invest, invest, invest. If you don't know what to do with your money, either invest it, give it to charity, give it to your family, or just save more. As opposed to experiences. After the purchase, we may experience a period of euphoria, which quickly subsides. Roman author and politician Pliny the Younger stated, an object in possession seldom retains the same charm that it had in pursuit, end quote. So if we keep oh, our possessions fuck. minimal, we won't miss out on long-term satisfaction. Moreover, by not buying so much stuff we don't need, we don't waste money on fleeting moments of happiness while burdening ourselves with ever-increasing piles of non-essential rubbish. From a more artistically minimalist point of view, just owning less stuff is only part of the equation. A simplified and uncluttered living environment also depends that on how we so design cool. it. Even though human beings are social creatures, the presence of people could serve as a significant burden. If we have surrounded ourselves with too many people, or worse, the wrong people, our social life may cause us more harm than good. The problem with having many social connections is that we often don't see which of those connections we actually enjoy. Exactly, bro. Like, instead of like buying stuff just to impress people that you don't even know, they like you or not it's just a waste of time ah oh, fuck Let me get some water stay hydrated but uh, yeah it's just i can see like buying like one a jacket here or two but after that bro you don't need any more that's why People often to like hold on to things just so they can impress people that they don't even know nor like. It just doesn't make any sense. Minimalism. For example, we may be part of a large social circle, but within that circle, there are only a handful of people we genuinely connect with. At the same time, all those people we don't connect with expect us to attend their parties and other events. We may not even enjoy these events and see them as social obligations. With friends, quantity probably isn't better than quality. Interestingly enough, research conducted by evolutionary psychologists, link below, suggests that having fewer friends is a sign of intelligence. This research shows that more social interaction correlates with greater happiness. However, these correlations are diminished or reversed for intellectuals, meaning that many social interactions make them less happy. Depending on what kind of person you are, these outcomes may be another reason to simplify your social life. The term social minimalism points to minimizing one's <laughs> yeah. social interactions, limiting them to what's essential for one's satisfaction. Yeah, he does have a point. You don't really need as much friends, because like I say, you know, like in life, don't fuck his, like, don't prioritize of, like, impressing people, bro. Just, like, just do you, man. Just Social do you. minimalism doesn't have to mean cutting out friends or becoming a hermit, as the amount and nature of social interaction one prefers is do personal. Simplifying our social lives I isn't necessarily phone, limiting the number of friends. It could also be limiting the number of social interactions with these friends and being selective about what kind of social interactions we engage in. 
we may avoid needless, repetitive chit-chat at specific social gatherings while embracing one-on-one -on -one conversations during Digital forest minimalism? walks. Feeling overwhelmed by our busy lives is a common complaint in modern times, which goes hand in hand with anxiety and by stress. That. But in many cases, it's by not just because life demands too this. much of us. It's also because there's too much noise, mainly because of digital technology. Life is full of distractions, especially yeah. after the arrival of modern technology. We need to get off of TikTok, people. If you're going to use TikTok, Instagram, whatever, use it to your advantage. Make money off of that shit. Uh, I'm planning on to become an Instagram model because, you know, why the fuck not? You can make money off of it. I'll probably make an OnlyFans because guess what? You can make money off of it. You can literally make money off of your fucking phone, people. We need to stop consuming. The amount of stimuli the average human being experiences is unprecedented. At any time of the day, text messages, emails, phone calls, and notifications of our countless social media pages come in. There are numerous television channels to choose from, on top yep. of an increasing number of streaming services yep. that our phones grant us access to unlimited information online. Unsurprisingly, we experience a nagging feeling that there's always something to be done and that we're missing out. Digital minimalism is a form of minimalism concerning itself with limiting one's time using technology. Author Cal Newport. So basically, like, stop buying Fortnite skins, the Battle Pass, fucking Netflix, whatever, man. We got, we got to stop buying into those things. Those are distractions. It's there to distract you. Wrote that our sociability is quote unquote too complex to be outsourced to a social network or reduced to instant messages and emojis. His book Digital Minimalism offers ways to declutter digitally without throwing away the baby with the bathwater. After all, technology can be very beneficial. He describes digital minimalism as follows, and I quote. A philosophy of technology use in which you focus your online time on a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value and then happily miss out on everything else. End quote. By cutting down our online time, we experience much fewer unnecessary distractions and stimuli, which, considering how widespread digital technology like going outside, bro, or walking your dog she is amounts to a significant reduction of clutter goals and ambition indecisiveness and procrastination are illnesses of our time an era with countless possibilities and myriad choices to make for many it's challenging to set priorities as there are so many ways to go so they want too much and focus too little <laughs> unfortunately if you want everything you'll eventually end up with nothing the schedule of the average modern day Western You can't be you can't be a bot, dude. You can't be a fucking bot. Stop conforming, stop following society ways. Oh, you gotta get a job, you gotta get married, make kids. Work more. <laughs> Provide for said kids. Die. Pass on a generation. Like some people are cool with that. Like, don't get me wrong. Some people are like cool with like starting a family, but I'm when it when it when it comes to like making dreams, like having ambitions, bro. You got you gotta you gotta do it, man. You only live one life, bro. Like, let getting married and having kids be the last thing on your on your on your book. Cause you you just don't want to conform, man. You just don't want to fucking conform. An individual is cramped. This mentality of always needing to be doing something reflects how many of today's parents raise their children. Aside from school and the occasional house chores, it's not uncommon. School teaches you how to be a slave. School teaches you how to, how to be a fucking robot. Think about it. Pledge of Allegiance, going to the fucking lines for, for lunch, recess. Having a name tag on your fucking desk, bro, it's, it's, it's there to, like, make you a slave. School is not for everybody. That these kids attend... And no, I'm not condoning to drop out. I'm not. Two or more different sports and several other activities a week. 
On Saturday, it's soccer practice. On Sunday, it's Boy Scouts. On Tuesday, it's tennis practice. On Wednesday, it's piano lessons. See? And on Thursday, it's horse riding. It's, fu it's fucking see crazy. young adults continue this trend, stuffing their schedules with many undertakings. Swiss philosopher Henri Frédéric Amiel stated, and I quote, A man must be able to cut a knot, for everything cannot be untied. He must know how to disengage what is essential from the detail in which it is enwrapped, for everything cannot be equally considered. In a word, he must be able to simplify his duties, his business and his life." End quote. A minimalist approach to our schedules creates oversight and may help us concentrate on what's essential in our lives. In doing so, we need to be able to say no to certain things and be willing to Basically saying no to like hanging out or fucking buying shit, useless stuff. Or just like doing something that's not value valuable of your time, you know? Especially when it comes to like Fortnite. Even though I like Fortnite. To walk in a different direction than our peers, but in exchange for more time and space in our agendas. Mind. We can declutter our environments as much as we want. If our minds are full of rubbish, then it's likely we'll still complicate our lives. This you see, all that shit right there, all that shit, bro, you don't want that in your head. I want to be happy, depression, work, lack of money, house problems. Like, those are just like, bro, those are just temporary problems, bro. Those are just temporary problems. You, sh you shouldn't have that in your head all the fucking time. What should be in your head is like like getting this money, um, pursuing a, a, a dream, some shit like that, you know? Not this wumbo-jumbo conformity shit. Despite our simplified surroundings, overthinking, worrying, and ruminating make uncomplicated things complicated. Also, it often makes problems much more significant than they are. In fact, problems originate in the mind, not in the outside world. Living a simple life, while burdened by racing complex thoughts, seems pretty contradictory. Our living rooms may be minimalistic and clean. Our heads may be full of worries about work. Our agendas may be spacious. Our brains may ruminate about past events. If obsessive thinking haunts us every waking minute, despite our simplified surroundings, how futile have been our efforts to simplify our lives for well-being? Without a doubt, an uncluttered living environment may contribute to mental clarity, but simplicity is best served with the coolness of a tranquil mind. Thank you for watching. Facts, man. Facts. Let's look at the comments. In this day and age, my life has become complicated, especially my social and digital life. I always wonder how to simplify it somehow. Thank you for making this video. It's really easy, man. Just like... When it comes to like buying things, you just gotta ask yourself, am I gonna need this? Will this be useful in the future? If so, will I be able to make money off of it? Because, you know, they're scalpers. And so on. And... If you say no to any of those questions, then put it back. Good summary. I know I've created something I imagine really sex possible that I already have it. This helps me know if I really want exactly exactly what I just said. Just make sure whatever you get, it's useful, and you're able to sell in the future, like pop figures or fucking. Well, not like pop figures. I don't fucking know, but like. Just be just be mindful, you know? Just be mindful.